that you need. People were seeing a scarecrow, but they also saw the river going down Main Street. And they know who we are, and, we know where, and they now know where we're at. So guys, that is an awesome testimony. Be the reapers, sow and reap. That is what we're all about here. We want to build relationships with people and build relationships in very different ways, thanks to our lion back there. Uh, I know she was very, very tired from the uh, shoes that she wore, very hurt. So, uh, we're going to go around and Who's next? have other testimonies. Don't be shy. Let's speak about what we encountered out there, guys. That's what we're here for. Can you want? James, start us off, bud. <laughs> James, my buddy, he'll do anything. Let's start to turn right over Stay over here to see this Come up here. Please. <laughs> Come up here. That way, Joey won't be mad at me because we didn't video this. Because <laughs> I thought Patrick was going to be the Oprah Winfrey thing. He's going to pass it all around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We just do all of that. We hold our own mic now. See, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was, Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was a really awesome, awesome experience. Uh, I've been doing this. Yeah, like three or four different churches <laughs> already started in Atlanta for me uh, doing it. But uh, this year it was, uh, it started out like with this, this lady uh, came out outside and was kind of reluctant to, to have me come on a property and all. She was kind of uh, fussing and all like, who are you? What are you doing here? And all that kind of stuff. And she, uh, I was like, well, let me tell you something. I'm just gonna leave you this fruit right here. I left it on one of her cars. There was a whole bunch of cars, and I don't know if they ran or not, but uh, they didn't look like they did. Because one had a tree growing through it. <laughs> so, uh, I just sat on one of the trunks, and I was like, "Hey, no strings attached. It's okay. You know, uh, I'm just doing this, through, you know, love of Jesus on you." And, uh, and she she was like, uh, still complaining while I was walking off, and I was like. Well, hey, just go out and get the fruit. You ain't got to touch me or nothing. And uh, by the time I got to the street, she changed her mind all of a sudden. said, hey, God, what the heck, I'll just come out there and get it. I was like, okay. So I had that pamphlet then because, you know, if she wasn't going to be engaged with me, I ain't going to give her that pamphlet. <laughs> if I was just going to leave it on the plane, it's like she's not at home, you know, on the trunk. So I brought the pamphlet. And I said, well, okay. Let me so I got out the trunk and I gave it to her and put it in her hand. And she's like, Oh, I, I need a church and all that, and I'm so excited that y'all came. And, and then she was like yelling at me the whole time, like halfway down the street. I was like, Merry Christmas and all. She's still talking to me while I was trying to go to other people's house. <laughs> she was like, they ain't going to answer the door when you're talking to me. <laughs> and the, the reason I even knew what house to start at, because we had to go up and down and count the houses, was there was like cushions. Like the, the dog got ripped up. Everyone's like, "Yeah, we got to start at the house where the cushions got ripped up." That's, that's what we start at. So uh, I got her address and I gave it to the proper authorities. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's we have the <laughs> Who's next, guys? Oh, I want to say something real quick. This never would have been possible if it wouldn't have been for the day before the people put the fruit. Yeah, we didn't have pictures of this, but Dad. Yeah, we did. And um, there were pictures of that. Were there pictures of y'all? Yeah. They went down the day before to, to the farmer's market to get the fruit, guys. See, it takes every stage, every step of the way to make this happen. Anybody else? Man, I sure didn't hear that. I'm going to call it Joe. <laughs> you really want to shoot me away from, from the uh, float. <laughs> Don't be shy, guys. Don't be shy. All right, man. <laughs> told me that they didn't want me to say anything because I had to start preaching or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me, preach, uh, Brother let me Joe, talk preach. About, uh, something that, that almost didn't happen. Um, if, if, if you don't think Satan tries to uh, stop God's work, uh, these last few days we had a perfect example of that. Uh, Will showed up with his truck we hooked up that uh, 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 float and uh, we got ready to go down to the rendezvous place to meet all of our characters and people that were on the float and they were down there at uh, space number 17 uh, waiting for the float to show up so we could finish 
putting stuff on the float. Start. 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 Yeah, to start. That's right. Start. And uh, and Will, how far did we get? About uh, half. About about four blocks. <laughs> and Will's truck, that's probably the most reliable truck I know, uh, started running hot. We pulled it over and uh, put antifreeze in it, did everything we could, didn't seem to be able to get it uh, uh, straightened out. So here we were, uh, all of our people down in the middle of Monroe, the truck out in the middle of nowhere on HDA the road. And uh, uh, we called Brian and said, we're broke down, we're broke down you're going to have to have a walking float <laughs> get everybody prepared to walk and the next thing i knew a truck appeared i don't know where it came from brian but uh, one of our sister churches uh crossroads mike where we started guys in the warehouse over there mike keaton the pastor happened to be up on the square happened to be up on the square selling hot or giving away hot chocolate and i saw one of his members and I flagged him down and said, Rebecca, take him over to Pastor Mike right now. Because if anybody knows him, he trained Joey and I very well. We stubborn ourselves. And we knew that all the hard work that we put toward that flow was not going to go uh, in vain. Yeah. We had 10 minutes when we got there. The flow finally arrived. We had 10 minutes. And, well, five minutes. But through the great city of Monroe, we got honorable mention. Woo! I want to show this to you guys and say y'all are doing fantastic with your hard work in the last five minutes. You may not think that's a big deal, but guess what? There is a winner and there is honorable mention and there is no other. Oh, wow. So that's like number two, you know. Oh, like, wow. Uh, University of Georgia, you know, we're number two. We're number two. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Shane, why don't you tell us your experience about passing out fruit? Because you had, you had one Sunday, but tell us about Saturday. Oh, good. Um, well, I helped with fruit in the bags on Thursday. And there was a little bit of fussing. Saturday morning between the Brocks. That's the Brock boys. Because <laughs> they are Brocks. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they gave us the biggest neighborhood, and we had the pleasure of walking all the way down the biggest neighborhood, all the way to the very end, yeah. passing off fruit baskets. And uh, there was actually good perception. A lot of people said thank you, and there was actually one gentleman at the very end. The very end. And Sunday. <laughs> no, this was Saturday. Oh, Saturday? Yeah, with the house with 120 houses. Neighborhood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that neighborhood well. <laughs> but, but there was actually one gentleman that asked, and um, uh, his kids were out playing around. He asked, you know, is there a youth program? We're just getting started. Um, they asked me to help them out. Um, I'm from a different church, but I really would love for you to come here. And there was people that asked, and people that got good reception. And there was one particular lady on Sunday that didn't want fruit basket at all. And I actually told him to come back and pick it up off of her doorstep because she didn't want it. So I did. But it was a lot of fun. And we got our name out. And anybody who we talked to, we gave a pamphlet, and there was good reception. People were like, wow, where's this at? We really need a church around here. There was one lady who said, we really need a church around here. And I'm so glad y'all are here. And I'm happy to hear about this and what y'all are doing in this community. Amen. Beware of dogs, no trespassing, private property. And we were, we were very hesitant 
to go to most of these houses. Uh, we did go to some, in spite of the signs, but uh, we finally, uh, Nacha, Shane's mom, talked to one of the ladies and she's like, we've been having robberies on the street regularly during the day because the houses are isolated and they're by themselves and nobody wants to talk to anybody random that they don't know on the street. So that is a definite prayer area for us because we want to be the people that they like to see coming on that street. So. Yeah. Anybody else? Pam? I just want to say, um, encourage you because a lot of people, when you talk about going out and talking to other people, they kind of like, oh, I can't do that, I can't do that. Well, don't let Satan discourage you and tell you that you cannot be used. I personally do not have a problem talking one on one, but that particular day, I drove Brian, Jacob, Marie, and Sarah around, and I felt like <coughs> Brian said, "Do you want to go to the doors?" And I said, "I feel like I'm a ministry right here, driving you around. Amen. You know, just y'all, y'all needed a driver, and I'm here. So don't ever let Satan say <coughs> discourage you from not coming out to one of these things because you may not want to, you know, go talk to someone face to face because." He will discourage you, but you can be used in many ways and not just talking. Y'all know me. Y'all don't like talking in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> like this Pam was saying, don't say you can't do it because I brought my best friend back along who has a broken leg and he was still out there walking. Amen. So, don't let nobody stop let me read something real quick, Patrick. Here's the reason why we do what we do, and this is part of our vision statement, and, and for the weeks to come, you guys will hear this. <clears throat> it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make, therefore go. You see what that's saying right there? Go, not sit here, but go out into the community. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So that's what we're supposed to do, guys. We, uh, <clears throat> here's the river, we, we're not going to be a church that just sits here and get comfortable in these chairs and say, hey, we're having church. Because for us, we don't want to go to church. We want to be the church. All right, as Christians... We're supposed to go out in the community, like we talked about, we go and invest in them. And so this is the first stages, and there'll be a lot more to come with this. We're gonna go out at Easter and do the same thing. We'll go out a week before Easter, and you'll, you'll hear more about that in the near future. I got one quick one to tell Brian. Okay. <laughs> you know what house this is. <laughs> oh yeah, we, listen, we, man, I laugh so hard. <laughs> we went up this one house. And it's a long, like, broken down fence. You go down the long driveway. You get there, like, four or five cars. And there's a real big dog coming out. I said, I'm not getting out. There's a dog. <laughs> yeah, thank you, by the way. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting out because I know the popos. It's like, hey, guess what? I spilled a badge on a bike. So he, call, he called himself listening to the bulldog game while I was up at that house, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, so he, he gets out, and the second dog comes around the corner of this car. I'm like, boy, and he said, yeah. <laughs> so he goes up and he gets up this one door and no response. He's like, I go around the other side. He goes around the other side and he's gone maybe two seconds. And I see him high stepping. <laughs> and I said, What's wrong with you, Brian? He said, Man, that dude told me he was gonna call the cops. Yeah. He said, he said, he said, Don't you ever come on our property again? All you folks are like, we don't want you to come up here. And I told you before, he was like, I've never been here before, so I don't know who you told before, but we've never been up here. He says, well, I'm going to call cops. You don't get out right now. He says, well, let me tell you something. He said, well, we've got a cop, and he goes to our church, and he's in the car right now. And he goes, oh, really? He changed the story. <laughs> I said, come on, let's go meet him real quick. So that was the story I went to on Brian, because I thought it was really funny to see him come off that porch like this. <laughs> <laughs> see, I wasn't going to share it. I wasn't going to share it. He was past that. Let me tell you. Like, out of that, we know that they heard the gospel. Amen. So... I just want to. I won't share it, bro. You did that to me, but that's okay. <laughs> because earlier, earlier that day, he come running out driveway. Somebody was chasing him. We <laughs> were talking about somebody high stepping, and he was high stepping up here. She said, "Get out of here, don't you? Don't you, my brother? Get out of here!" And I was like, "Oh, Lord, this man." Patrick said, "Crank the car up." <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, 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 Patrick,
will take about a minute. A minute and a half. Just in case you're skeptical about whether people respond, if you go to their door, knock on their door, and all this talk that we've done about going up and, and doing all that stuff, I want to uh, uh, I want to help you to understand that it does work. Okay, uh, there's some people here that uh, that I'm going to uh, point out and, and ask a question to about somebody knocking on their door and why they went to church, okay? Hannah, uh, I don't know, how many years ago? Somebody knocked on your door about a block from the church, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Would you, would you, have, come to, would you have come to that church at had uh, one of those Brock boys not come and knocked on that door and yeah those Brock boys knocked on the door and she and her sister became uh, uh, really uh, staunch uh, members of uh, of the church and uh, and her mother is quite involved uh, with uh, with our church in Covington now because somebody knocked on the door and I uh, want to tell them about Jesus and invite them to church. Amen. Sheila, so many years ago, I, I won't say how many, uh, but <laughs> close to 25, 24, somebody knocked on your door, didn't they? Yep. What'd they do? Knocked on the door and asked you to come to church or they give you some fruit or what? What happened? No, you just knocked on the door and asked us to come to church. Yeah, and what did you and your family do? Okay. <laughs> All right. Jackie, did a uh, number of years ago, did, did somebody knock on your door and ask you to come to church or, or share fruit with you? What, what, what happened when, when that bunch from Auburn Chapel? You know, we started giving the fruit at that time, right? Right. That's right. We moved into her subdivision and she knew she was going to come to That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and then people, and then people that are as young as Shane here. See, Shane doesn't know it, but I'll see if I can embarrass him a little bit. I got pictures of Shane in diapers <laughs> while uh, while we were baptizing down at the lake, you know. But Shane's mother, yeah, you don't remember it, but uh, but we remember it quite well. Um, just wanted to point out just a few people that just happened to be here tonight that responded to a knock on the door. The other day, we knocked on 500 doors. What if 1% of them showed up? They will. They will. The statistics tell us that closer to 5% will eventually show up. And then it depends on what happens here when they show up. Amen. James, would you come forward, please? At this time, we're going to have an invitation. James is going to come sing. Right. Now, we talked about in our sermon a while ago about taking our thoughts captive, making them obedient, so we can have a better Christian walk. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I have things in my life that I have a daily struggle with. And then I have to take that captive, you know, and make it obedient. But this time we're going to open up the altar. And if anybody wants to come down and pray, Patrick's here, I'm here, Dad's here. And we'd love to pray with you guys. Thank you.